Well, there's a lot of speculation right now. Uh, obviously, people are concerned at the amount of knowledge these attackers had on the internal banking systems. There's a few reasons for that. Uh, in this particular scenario, uh, what we're starting to see is that malicious applications were installed inside the bank, giving the attackers uh, a first-hand view of the way banking systems work, the way uh, transactions are being made, the usernames and passwords, potentially even the, the fraud prevention systems. So they've been able to carry out uh, the, the movement of a significant amount of money before uh, they tripped themselves up, essentially. But could this have been done without an insider, or is that already a given? Well, I think uh, the speculation that insiders are, be, are behind this is because the amount of knowledge the attackers had. But I don't think it's necessarily the case that an insider is behind this. Uh, certainly, that is one possible cause. Uh, but the attackers have the ability to install applications that give them the ability to monitor everything that's happening on, a, on one of the systems within the bank. They have the ability to monitor what the person is that's doing a transaction on one part of the world, including capturing their, their username and path, password. So inside the bank, they're acting as a legitimate user. Now, the Bangladeshi Central Bank Governor resigned over this issue. Now, what could the bank have done, considering that the funds are with the New York Federal Reserve? Well, I think the first thing is uh, I'm not necessarily comfortable when you hear that the reason why uh, more transactions were stopped was because of a spelling error and uh, Deutsche Bank had the... Uh, uh, the quick uh, thought to look into some of these transactions further because of that spelling error. I think uh, it's certainly important that a lot of work is done to understand how this happened. Uh, if it was certainly a, a cyber attack and if there was somebody that has installed uh, malicious applications within the bank, it's important to understand how they got in. Uh, it's important to understand whether they've made any changes to the network which would allow them to potentially to come back. So I think it's pretty early to speculate, but it's a pretty significant issue that needs a lot of uh, forensic analysis. And also that it has, it has been in the system for quite a while undetected. Now, what makes countries like the Philippines an easy target for these cyber attacks? Well, I think the, the big challenge is that in this particular case, once money makes its way to the Philippines and certainly once money is moved outside of the bank itself, and we've seen uh, a lot of talk that money made its way to casinos and to other uh, destinations, it's very hard to, to stop that. It's very hard to potentially uh, put a freeze and, and uh, backtrack. So that makes, uh, that makes it certainly an uh, attractive destination. But the, the concern that I have is, as we know, the internet has no borders. It's very easy for an attacker in one part of the world to carry out uh, an attack uh, in a different part, and they can do that without necessarily being caught. Uh, and it's very easy for them to, to carry out these crimes. So we need stronger systems in place to make sure that we don't end up in a situation like this where we're trying to backtrack to work out what happened. That's what we want to know more about because these cyber attacks are getting even more sophisticated. So what can we do to be one step ahead of them? Well, I think uh, it's a really good question. And I think the first thing that I would say is know that you've been attacked. You, you mentioned earlier that in this particular situation, uh, this has been going on for quite some time. We, we see attacks that sometimes are uh, carry out over two, three, four, five years before the victims realise uh, that they've been compromised. And that to me is a, is a big challenge. We need to reduce the time it takes to determine that uh, an attack has happened. Uh, we need to reduce the scope of what the attackers can do on the network. So it certainly takes a, a significant amount of technology to make sure people don't penetrate the networks and the systems that we use in the first place. But then we also need to make sure that we can discover these attacks as quickly as possible and have people trained up in the processes on how to not only protect their, their organisation and their personal information, but also how to recover in these sorts of scenarios. Thank you very much, Mike, for joining us. There were very valuable input on this very crucial issue.